Hi, this is Father Louis Skurdy welcoming you to Friends of the Word. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter. The stole I am wearing is from Japan. And in a special way, I'd like to pray for all the people in Japan who are suffering through the earthquake and, and the tsunami threats. And uh, of course, throughout the world, there are so many of our intentions. And one thing is common, in common we have with all of them, we're presenting them to Jesus who hears us. Do you hear him? Thank you for joining me, and let's go to the homily. And if you want to contact me, it's Father Lou, F R Lou, Skirty at hotmail.com. God bless you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can take them out of my Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the Gospels speak to us contemporarily, if that's a word, in our own day, in our own time. The stole that I'm wearing, uh, I, re I got when I was in Japan. And I'd like to, of course, bring to mind now the Japanese people undergoing so many natural disasters right now as we speak, and those recovering, and those who are aiding them. The Gospels and the Scriptures speak to us in our own time. We hear in the Acts of the Apostles where Paul and Barnabas traveled to Turkey. Well, it didn't say Turkey, but it was Turkey. And now we hear the disasters and the, and the stresses and the scandals going on in Turkey. And we, and we pray for the people of Turkey. Even as it's a Muslim population, 1% maybe Christian, and under the rule of Ataturk, Turkey became an independent country, a neutral society, but people were able to pray as they chose to pray, build churches, synagogues, mosques as they chose to because they were free to do so. The current government of Turkey is not so tolerant and there are reports that Christian churches are being closed and being taken over by the, by the government. So the stresses of our faith go back to 2,000 years and regrettably are contemporary with us today as we read the papers, as we read the scriptures. But I want, you to ask, I want to ask you to do something right now. If Jesus were to ask you a question, what would it be? I'd like you to just be quiet. Hear the voice of the shepherd. That question he asked you is prayer. Connection with Jesus. Jesus comes on the scene and fits into the world situation, the world um, politically, socially, economically, 2,000 years ago, and it was present then and is present today. And he struggled. So if you struggle with any part of your life, you're with Jesus. He struggled to get his word across. This section of the gospel <laughs> was, was almost Jesus, not that Jesus would do this, is sticking out his tongue like that to the people. Because it was the dedication of, of the temple uh, on the feast of what we call Hanukkah today. And Jesus was there preaching. And some of the Pharisees, where do you get your authority from? Who told you to preach like this? Where do you get your authority from? Who told you to heal like this? 
And, and you would say, you would think, whoa, oh, nah, he's back into a corner. What is Jesus going to say? My sheep hear my voice. Even amid the struggle and the controversy that are pre that's presented to Jesus, my sheep hear my voice. They, let's put it this way. My sheep decipher my voice. My, my sheep hear me amidst the clutter and clatter of life. My he sheep are always in contact with me. And I know them. And they follow me. To hear such a, a brief statement from the gospel selection today, so oh, that's Jesus in a few words, but magnificently powerful words that we need to hear in the 21st century as those his contemporaries heard in his own time. Don't worry about all the clutter and clutter and, and conflict and, and rejection and, and persecution. If you hear my voice, you follow me in your actions, in your prayer. A few minutes ago, I asked you just to be quiet for a second and hear the question that Jesus would ask you. Take that as your prayer for the day. Think about how important it is for Jesus to speak to all of us in our prayer life. And sometimes we do it this way, you know, from our mouths, we send out stuff to Jesus. Well, well that's nice, it's appropriate. It's him hearing our voice, but the silence. We hear his voice. Encouraging us when we're down. Encouraging us when we're losing something. Encouraging us when we're challenged. He hears us, of course, and he invites us to hear his voice. Jesus, such a magnificent presence in our lives because as we hear his voice and follow him in our struggles in our, all the issues that we have and if today you have no struggles that's fine you keep following jesus keep hearing his voice and he promises us as we follow him through all the stuff of life and we push it aside that he gives us eternal life that he will bring us to himself. Why are we listening to this, what, these words? This is the Easter season when eternity became available to us through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as I say many times, the most significant event in history since the creation of the world. And we are celebrating it in the Easter season, but come on, we celebrate it every day. Doesn't matter the season. Even through the holidays of Christmas, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Because through the resurrection on Easter, he came back to us and promises us that if we follow him, we'll get eternal life. That we will live this life fully. We should. Happy, sad, glad, mad, go through the changes, whatever it is. Live it fully, always hearing his voice. What would Jesus want me to do? How is Jesus speaking to me at this moment? And as we live this life, and it's not, you know, Jesus and me. It's us. He came to all of us. The Holy Scriptures today, especially the book of Revelation, I, John, had a vision of a great multitude of every nation, race, people, and tongue. The Scriptures fulfilled. He came for all people. Those who survived the great time of distress, who had their robes washed in the blood of the Lamb and came out sparklingly white. Eternal life. Through suffering. Through experiencing the voice of Jesus and listening and living the voice of Jesus. Don't forget, we have to follow him. As we hear him, He's challenging us, inviting us to follow him. And the word is so significant. What did Peter, excuse me, what did the Paul and Barnabas do? They preached the word of God. And because of the word of God spoken to them, word, and words have to be listened to, 
they were persecuted. They were thrown out of the synagogue. They created controversy. Pro-Christians, against Christians, Gentiles, Jews, or that's what happens. When you live the word of God, it's not easy. There's going to be controversy. And for those of our faith, whatever you want to call the millennials, young adults, hipsters, that are not here in our family right now, not here present in our churches. I have to challenge us. What did we say or do to push them out? What kind of welcome did we not give them or what kind of distressed welcome did we give them? What in our actions and words out there have disproven our faith in Jesus Christ? and given scandal to the young adults of our society, Western Europe and the United States. What is there? Can they be listening to the sound of media, social interaction, more than the voice of God? Well, if that's the case, we as a church, as individuals, as family members, have not spoken the word of God that we hear in Jesus and follow. It's our problem that our young adults are not filling and packing our churches. But they're, in many ways, seeking something beyond them through these various instruments of social interaction, social media, all the gimmicks that go on the phone. They're seeking something beyond. You got it. We got it. We had the invitation to eternal life. You couldn't get more beyond than that. But we're not sharing it, it seems, enough. And you know, Francis, we're buddies, love him. He's doing it. And he aggravates a lot of priests and bishops throughout the world as he does it. Live and hear the word of Jesus Christ, the voice of Jesus. He hears it. And he enacts it. And we don't always like what he does when he brings families from, that are from Syria on the island of Lesbos, brings them back to the Vatican for security and for, for health and, and family values. And they're not all Christian. Most of them, as a matter of fact, were Muslim. See how he hears the voice of God and follows Jesus? and follows the promise of every race, every nation, every people, every tongue. He's not God, he's far from it, but he's our vicar of Christ on earth, and he's given us a very clear indication of how we hear the voice of the Good Shepherd and follow him. Be quiet and still, and enjoy the sound of the baby's voice as you go inside and hear the voice of Jesus speaking to you. What is he saying?